Okay, we have another piecewise function that we're going to take a look at. So this time we have a square. Here's our conditions. The first formula is only used when x values are less than 1. And the second one is a linear one that's used only when x is greater than or equal to 1. We want to first answer these three parts and then we're going to graph it. The first one, f of negative 1. So for this one, we look at the number inside the parentheses and we see which one of these equations it's, it's going to belong to. So negative 1, that's less than 1, which means that we're, we're going to have to use only the first equation for this one. We're not going to use the second one, just the first one only because negative 1 is less than 1. So I have negative 1 half, I put negative 1 in for x, I'm going to simplify it. Negative 1 squared is 1. So negative one-half times one will give you negative one-half. For part B, I have one. Now one does not belong to the first one, but it belongs here because you have an equal sign underneath this one. The equal sign means that the one is actually included, so we're only going to use the bottom equation this time. We're putting in a one in place of this x right here. So two times one plus one, that's going to give you three. So one, three, is going to be the point that would be on the line or when x is 1 you get a y value of 3. Next we're going to do the square root of 9 tenths. Now if you're not sure what this is then put it into your calculator and you can find out that that's going to be 0.95. So 0.95 would be less than 1 so therefore we have to put the square root of 9 tenths into the uh, the first equation. So that's going to look like this. Negative 1 half I have the square root of 9 tenths, that's going to be squared. The square is going to get rid of the radical and you end up with negative 1 half times 9 tenths multiply across the top across the bottom and you're going to get negative 9 twentieths. So that would be the answer if you put in the square root of 9 tenths, this is what you'd get out as a return, that's your y value. We got it again from the first equation. Now we're ready to do a graph on this. So. Uh, like last time, when you're doing a graph, you want to get a table on this. Now because we have a square, this time you want to get at least three points to use. So I have negative one half x squared right here. The first point again that you always want to do no matter what is you want to use the point that's here on your condition. So the condition uh, is your one. Now again, it doesn't matter if that's included or not. Because there's a 1 that's here, you still want to use it. That'll be an open circle on our graph, and that'll tell us where the graph either ends or where it begins. Put 1 into here, negative 1 half times 1 squared, you get negative 1 half. I'm going to make another column here that has the x and y together, so I can write it as a point. I end up with 1 and negative 1 half. The next point you pick should be a value less than 1. Let's use zero because zero is an easy one to plug in. If you do that, you get a zero as a result. So you get zero, zero as the next point that's going to be on that curve. Now let's try another one. Any point that's less than one, again, I can use one or two, doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to use negative one here. Negative one times negative one squared. We actually did that one previously. Uh, when, we, when we first began, that was part A. We actually had the same answer and this is going to give us negative one half, so you get negative one and negative one half. Let's take a look now at what the graph will be with these points that we just came up with. The graph will do here. Okay, so the first one is one and negative one half. So one and negative one half will be right here. Now of course that point right there, that's going to have to be an open circle because that point was originally not included here. As I mentioned earlier, we're still going to use the one, that just defines where the graph is actually going to end. The next one was zero, zero, that's going to be here. And then I have negative one and negative one half is there. So that what's going to happen is the graph is going to end up doing something like this. It's going to uh, go up and go down and it's going to keep going down forever. And we see that curve there, that's common for uh, a quadratic one that has a square on it. Now the next one, the 2x plus 1, we're going to make a table for that one as well. Now because this is a line, that means we only need two points uh, for that one. So I'm going to make a separate table down here, y equals 2x plus 1. 
And again, I always want to use whatever number is here in the condition, you must start and use that one. Now in this case, when I plot it, it's going to be a closed circle because uh, we have the equal sign underneath, which means we are including 1. So 2 times 1 plus 1, that's going to give us 3, which means that when we write this coordinate here, we have 1, 3 as the first point. Let's take a look at the, the plot of this one. So 1, 3 would be right here. And that's going to be a closed circle because, again, the 1 is included here. If it's, if it's included, if it has the equal sign, if it's included, you're going to use a closed circle. If it's not included, you use an open circle. We've got to get one more point. Let's use 2. And the, the point that I chose, it had to be a number greater than or equal to 1, greater than 1. We already used 1 already, so I chose 2. The next point I got by plugging that in was 2, 5. So I'm going to go over 2 and up 5. Next point is going to be right here. My line is going to go out this direction. So notice, I don't have any graph. I don't have a line going down this way, and the reason why is because I'm only allowed to use values that are greater than or equal to 1, which is what I have here. Also, same way, same reasoning, that's why I don't have a graph continuing beyond this open circle here because that's using the first equation. You can only use values that are less than 1 only, and so the graph, that's like an ending point there. So that's why it's really important to make sure that you use these numbers on your conditions, make sure you use those both on your graph.